Hi, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us here today for this webinar. My name is Deanna O'Connor, and I'm the founder of the Speak Up Club, which is an organization which was set up to empower women in business to really find their voice, to use it, and to practice public speaking skills in a safe environment. So what I found a lot in the Speak Up Club back when we used to do real life events, which hopefully we'll be returning to very soon, is that for a lot of people, one of the ways that they were trying to get out of their comfort zone and grow was with public speaking, which can be really daunting for a lot of people. Now, we're not going to be focusing on that today, but in a more general sense about how to step out of that comfort zone and how to go into a zone where you are growing. But it was a very powerful experience for a lot of people, and you could see it within an hour or two of a workshop. Someone who is very reticent, very scared, very fearful of something, really achieving some growth in a very short space of time that really made them so elated by the time they were leaving that workshop. So I think that stepping out of your comfort zone and going into a growth zone is a very, very powerful thing. And sometimes it can take a lot longer than an hour or two of a workshop, but <clears throat> there are certain ways you can think about it beforehand and prepare for it and work over a longer period of time for different things as well that can be very powerful. So today we're gonna to talk about how you move out of that comfort zone and into the growth zone. So first of all, let's look at what is growth exactly. If you're gonna look at sort of the dictionary definition of it, it's all about developing. It's this process that you're going through. And when you have achieved some growth, you should have an increase in your abilities, the value that you bring to your work, to your organization and potentially your importance as well. So in terms of career progression, it's really important if that if you want to progress your career that you don't get stuck in a fixed zone where you're just stagnating. So here we have a really well-known diagram which deals with the comfort zone and the different kind of steps that you go through. So I hope you can all see on screen, some of the, the text is quite small in order to fit it in, but. On one side, we have this where you're stagnating, where nothing is really happening. You're kind of stuck in the comfort zone. And where we want to get to is to get to this point where you're really flourishing, growing, learning, achieving, fulfilling all your dreams, all that wonderful stuff. So I'm gonna first take you through sort of those different zones that you work through and what you go through in those zones. So the big old comfort zone is where we're kind of mostly are naturally and it's kind of our natural state and it's where we feel safe, we feel in control, it's very familiar, it's very secure. It's not necessarily a bad thing to have a comfort zone because as human beings we need to feel psychologically secure, we need to feel safe. It's very important to have that kind of structure and security there but if you don't take any risks then you may not achieve the rewards that you can get from taking those risks. So there are times that it's really important to have a little positive pressure in your life and move out of that comfort zone. So it can be scary and you can you know, find a lot of excuses in that fear zone where maybe you don't have the confidence or maybe other people's opinions are getting to you. It could be stuff from your childhood where you weren't encouraged enough. All of these things can affect you psychologically and maybe keep you stagnated in that comfort zone and keep you from moving forward but where you want to go is into the next zone so you get over those fears and get into the learning zone and the learning zone is where you're really kind of getting a lot of new skills you're looking at the challenges the problems you have you're going to see what you can do about those so you're extending out of that comfort zone and you're enhancing your motivation and you want to learn more and keep that going. And then finally, you'll get into the growth zone, which is a great place to be. It's where you're really finding your purpose, living your dreams, all of that amazing stuff is happening. You've mobilized your creativity. You're finding that you're achieving objectives. Things are coming together. You're feeling fulfillment, but you're not stagnating in the growth zone either because even though you're feeling fulfilled, you know that you need to continue always moving forward. So you're also setting new goals. And then that brings you to a place where you're really flourishing. And I love that word flourishing. And in fact, I'd highly recommend if anybody wants a, a good weighty read is a book by the Irish psychologist Maureen Gaffney um, called Flourishing. It's, it's great. And if you are, it's not particularly about comfort zone growth zone, but it is about just having a sort of flourishing life. Um, I really, really recommend it. She's worked with a lot of big organizations like Intel as well. So it's a really interesting book to read and can help you through this, but not necessarily specifically about this. 
So one thing that can happen is if you get pushed out of your comfort zone too quickly is you can get in the fear zone, everything starts getting to you too much and you go into this downward spiral of the panic zone. So that's where you really don't want to be. Getting pushed out of your comfort zone too quickly means you are trying to deal with something that you're not able for. You don't have the skills, tools or support to deal with and you panic. You're not able to do it. It's really off-putting and it can stop you from further growth. So that's really what we're trying to avoid by really being clever about how we go into this growth zone and not pushing ourselves too far. Some pressure is good, but it has to be positive pressure. You don't want panic zone pressure because that is just going to negate any good work you're doing. So I think it's all about really calculated risks and you know, knowing maybe what you can stretch yourself to rather than overstretching yourself or feeling pushed into stretching yourself into something you're not really ready or able for. <clears throat> so first of all, we just want to kind of go, is there anything that's holding us back? Because sometimes we're going, oh, no, no, I think I'm not ready or able for this, but you are really, you, and you're just not going there. So there are organizational inhibitors, which can be, you know, in your company that you're working in, it can be organizational culture, and that can be very damaging in terms of if you feel like that if you try something new and maybe fail, that there might be some punishment for that, or maybe your organization isn't good at, you know, CPD, continual professional development, or, you know, just sending people on courses, things like that. <clears throat> Or you might even feel like there's some unconscious bias towards you um, that, you know, maybe, I mean, in terms of gender, maybe men are put forward for things where women aren't or things like that, or based on ethnicity or race or any of those things that may be holding you back. There's also sometimes you can feel like there's just not transformative roles in your company. Maybe there aren't the, the opportunities to move forward and grow in your role, but we can often blame all these organizational things, but ultimately we you know we as people can grow ourselves and we don't have to stay with that organization forever so if you take on some personal growth you may find a role outside that company that's a better company and a better fit for you so i don't think an organizational inhibitor should be a real inhibitor to your personal growth because there's more to life than work as well so it needn't be about work as well it can just be about personal growth so our own personal inhibitors tend to be around our confidence self-awareness and motivation then our confidence maybe a lack of confidence is holding us back a lack of motivation can be holding us back we don't see maybe the actual reward of doing something and maybe we need to change our mindset and go well actually if I do this thing what potentially could I gain from it there is perhaps a reward insight insight the other one in the middle there self-awareness I think can be an inhibitor because we don't realize that we are stuck or stagnating our need to grow. So actually we might not be aware that we are kind of just letting ourselves stagnate in our comfort zone. So sometimes we, may, we might need someone else to point that out to us or a life event that might give us a little shake up. And we realize that actually we've been doing the same thing the way we've always done it. And maybe we've been passed over for promotion or maybe we've stayed somewhere that's not really fulfilling us. And that can make us realize that we haven't had a good look at ourselves and thought about our own personal growth. So some of the foundational principles of growth that I want you to think about are agility, professionalism and innovation. So these principles are really kind of underpinning any growth that you have. And this can be in terms of growth as a person, growth of a business, um, they're all kind of relevant to all areas of life. So agility is something that I think we talk a lot about in business these days and being agile. And, you know, the past year has been a great example of how important that is because in so many ways of working, people have had, in small businesses especially, have had to really change how they do business. So agility could have been a retail shop really quickly reacting to pandemic and setting up an online shop and it's about thinking quickly thinking clearly so we understand that making changes as they're needed is really important part of our job so we need to be agile and we need to do that be agile personally in order to understand that if we want to grow that we do need to make changes in ourselves and in our lives and in our learning then professionalism is really important to growth because 
professionalism involves all of the qualities that are connected with being trained and being skilled. So I think it's an, another important thing to consider is that, you know, you may have done your degree, done a master's, got a job, gone right, that's it, sorted now, but it's not. That's always new things happening, all these new innovations in the world and technology and the way things work. And also, even in terms of soft skills, we can always improve our abilities to manage teams, deal with people. So all of these things that can affect our professional lives are things that we could continuously look at learning more about or growing. And you're doing that by attending a webinar today. So even little things like that are just in incrementally growing as people. So every webinar you go to, you are incrementally growing by learning something new. So well done for turning up already. <laughs> then innovation is another foundational principle. So it's the use of a new idea or method. So, you know, if you're doing something the way you've always done, but there's a really cool piece of software that could do it quicker and better. If you're not using that new idea or method and, you know, sticking to doing all your accounts with pen and ink in a ledger, then you, you aren't growing and kind of moving with the times. So these are the sort of things that we want to think about in terms of growth. So all of the fuel that kind of drives growth, the mindsets to have, the things to really push you forward and help your motivation is to be interested in innovation, to be interested in creative problem solving, to think outside the box. I hate that phrase, but it, it's a good thing to do. And then thirdly, bravery is really important because calculated risk taking is important. You don't want to be absolutely reckless, but one of the expression that I really love is leap and the net will appear. So sometimes you do actually just have to take that jump and you can be amazed by the supports that will come to help you. So whether that be mentors, support of your network, your friends, sometimes when you make a brave move or a brave decision and to do something new, it can really be very powerful. So <clears throat> initiating growth, to do that, first of all, it's important to think about this. I like to think about it in sort of a, the way you would think about in a business, you know, but thinking about it for yourself. So first of all, ideation is thinking about, well, what needs to be done. So you can take a look at, you know, what, what you want to do, what you want to grow in, implementation, putting it into practice, doing a course or something like that. And then monitoring is going, well, is it working? Is it having the effect on my career that I wanted? Has it been applicable in my daily life or my daily work? So I think those are important to kind of check in on every so often because you need to kind of come back and cycle around and do it on a kind of regular basis. So like I said, I'd say look at yourself like a company because sometimes personal growth can be kind of scary and we do feel these blocks to it that come up, especially if there are sort of, you know, deeper rooted psychological reasons stopping us. So getting into that zone, it can help to think about it in a more business-like kind of manner. So look at yourself like you're a small business as a person. And then go, what's in your annual report? And this is a really good thing to do at New Year, but you can do it any time of the year. So think about the year that was, the successes, the achievements, and then thinking about well, what do you want? What are your goals and your objectives for the next year personally? And this is actually not a bad time to do it as we are in a sort of transitionary period because a lot of people will be maybe returning to work in an office quite soon, sooner than we expected maybe. And I think it's a time when things are changing. So it's a really good time to look at how you want to return to work, how you want to return to the office and what person you want to be and what you want to achieve in this sort of new, new kind of era of our lives we're going into right now. So you can look at kind of what you have to work with. First of all, it's good to look at, say, as a company with their asset mix. So what you have already is your education, you have your experiences, and then you also have all your soft skills like communication, emotional intelligence. So looking at your sort of asset mix and what you have to offer, definitely in terms of career progression, then you can look at, well, what maybe can I add to this that will have, give me another string to my bow, give me something extra and that could maybe, you know, improve my career. But I definitely wouldn't leave the sort of soft skills side of that out. I do think that they are becoming more and more important in the world of work in general and certainly making the difference in terms of leading teams and managing their hugely important skills that are being recognized more and more. So it isn't just about the more tangible skills as well. And there may be some things in that mix that you want to think about in terms of your broader life. So, you know, do you want to grow in terms of the amount of kind of engagement with your community or 
doing some volunteer work or getting involved in a sporting team because those are really important to look at in terms of your broader kind of balance in your life as well. So just keep remembering the most successful companies, if we're looking at ourselves like small businesses, how do the most successful companies keep changing with the times? They keep adapting and they keep evolving. So if we treat ourselves like a business, we keep adapting, we keep evolving, we keep looking at what's out there and what is working in the marketplace and then what we need to add to our asset mix to, to actually be relevant to that marketplace. So I say challenge yourself and give yourself a target. And I picked 110% better than the previous year because I was going to say 150%, but if you're looking at your asset mix and say you've chosen education or professional development and you already have a PhD, well, you're not going to get 50% more PhD in the next year. So maybe 10% more, maybe you can do one course that takes a year or you can get part of a course done. So I think 110% better is a, is a good kind of solid, very achievable amount. And if you go over, that's even better again, but definitely think about every year, something in some way, some years you won't have as much time as others, but give yourself a goal where you are going to definitely improve or add something to your asset mix by 10% at least. So look at the previous year, what you did, what you achieved, what you learned, look at those gaps in the mix, look at what you want to fill them with. But then, and this is the kicker, this is the really important one. And I think this is where you should really lean into is what am I afraid of? So what are the things that I actually feel? Mm, I don't want to do that. I'm kind of scared of doing that. And this is something that when I've had people in speaker club workshops, they come into the workshop, they don't know what's going to happen. And then when they realize that they're going to have to get up and speak in front of a room full of people, that's what they're afraid of. That's what their block is. And that's what they don't want to do. But with a little bit of cajoling and support, when they do that, that is what they are most proud of. And that's what they're most happy they've done. So sometimes looking at what I'm kind of a little bit afraid of doing is the thing that you might get the most fulfillment and achievement from actually doing. So I'd always ask yourself that question, because if you're not a little bit afraid of doing the thing, are you really stepping out of your comfort zone at all? If you're not afraid of it, you're very comfortable doing it. So then the next thing to look at is how we go about doing it. So we're looking again in a business-like way about our personal in-house innovation team. So what can we do by ourselves? There's certainly a lot we can do in terms of, you know, education, reading, learning by ourselves, and of course, reflection as well. Now, the other thing is we do need to bring other people on board for us. So look at strategic partnerships, support and inspiration from your network. Maybe there's someone who could be a mentor for you. Then I think sometimes there are just times you need to call in the professionals and throw some money at the problem. So investing in talent, investing in yourself. So where can professional help be used? Where could maybe some coast coaching help you, help you boost your growth? Maybe there's courses you can sign up to. So look at all the areas that you can in this triangle. Look at yourself, your network, and then professionals as well that can help you achieve your goals. Another two things to think about are anchors and scaffolding. So <clears throat> growth is scary, growth is moving out of the comfort zone, but anchors kind of help you feel grounded. So anchors are skills and procedures that you're already familiar with. So you don't need to completely throw the baby out with the bathwater and do everything new. You can always, you know, whatever you're doing, kind of anchor to things that you're used to doing. So you can do something that is a little bit new, but it doesn't have to be completely new. You have all the skills that you already have or people in your network that are already, you know, there for you that can help you feel a little bit secure as you move forward into doing what you're doing. And that could be as simple as signing up to a course with your best friend who goes to it with you or a colleague that goes to it with you. So they're your anchor and you're not completely alone doing it. And then scaffolding is any support structure that encourages learning and development. So scaffolding could be an organization. It could be... <clears throat> you know, in your own organization that you work for, they could have a very good support structure. Your HR department could be very helpful to you. So they could be your scaffolding. So that could be anything that just helps you and kind of helps you, encourages you on your way. So just to recap on a few more things that we want to do. So maximizing your assets. So as you move through 
from my comfort zone to the learning zone to the growth zone. Make the most of the skills you have, make the most of the network you have, tap up people, talk about it, tell them what you're doing, see what they're doing, see what you can collaborate on. Invest in yourself, send yourself on a course, send yourself on a retreat, do some kind of new experience and something that's like you've never done before. Taking calculated risks, don't, you know, don't take reckless risks, but definitely if you're not taking some kind of risk, even just the risk of looking a little bit stupid, like I said, in a speaker club workshop where someone gets up to talk in front of people in a room or they have to ad lib and they have to do something completely unscripted. They're risking looking stupid. They feel like they're risking failing and freezing and not being able to talk, but it's a calculated risk because they're in a safe space. That's a really supportive environment. So the speaker club is providing that scaffolding by providing that safe space for them. So that's a very calculated risk and they, they stand up, they speak and the net appears because they manage to do it. They feel confidence and they get the support of the room. So in many ways, taking a risk <clears throat> is very important, but in the right environment, I would always say. So having that scaffolding there. Streamlining operations is another point. So stop putting off your growth by getting bogged down in unnecessary work. I think we can often kind of block ourselves by going, oh, I have this thing to do, that thing to do, that thing to do. But, you know, if you, if you really want to do something, if you don't really want to do something, you'll find excuses. If you really, really want it, you'll find a way to do it. So stop kind of saying there are all these, these reasons and excuses. Find a way. You know, you can make anything happen if you really want it. And I think that sometimes we're using those excuses as excuses not to grow when really we could. The other thing is capitalizing on innovation. So everything that can save you time and technology is, you know, so useful. And there are many ways to just grow your capabilities in general by capitalizing on that. Um, so positive expansion after all this, what you should have achieved and be, <clears throat> be feeling as a result of this growth is greater sense of innovation in your life, greater creativity, more expansion, expansion of yourself, your abilities, your capability, your network, your hopefully role, your salary, who knows, and more collaboration. And so more engagement with that network as well. And people who are doing interesting things that are of interest to you because growing, you know, it's not just personal growth, it grows your network as well. And that's a huge part of it and grows your life. So little words to ponder at the end is that growth is never by mere chance. It's the result of forces working together. That's James Cash Penny, better known as JC Penny, like the stories in the States. And really it's all about, you know, getting the right support structures in, in place, getting the right mentoring, getting the right network around you and taking risks, but with positive supports around you. <clears throat> so if anybody else would like to contact me, these are my contact details at the Speak Up Club. Hopefully be getting back to doing some real life workshops soon, but we'll be continuing with some more webinars here in um, Iconic Office, well, hosted by Iconic Offices. <laughs> I'm not in there right now, unfortunately, but you can contact me in any of these um, email or phone. And I will just tell you uh, when our next webinar is coming up. I think I have... Uh, Wednesday, the 7th of July, we'll be doing showcasing your brand's personality on social media. And then on the 13th of July, I'm doing a webinar on how to write a killer bio. And I'll be sending out a workshop worksheet in advance of the workshop um, on that. And we'll be working, it's a very much working through it in the workshop way. So it'll be more of a workshop than a webinar for that one, but I really look forward to those two coming up soon.